Hi there. In this video, we are going to create content for our media service, and then we are going to upload it to our service. We will use Make MKV to create the MKV files from our DVDs. The instructions for this video can be found in our blog. Have a look for the link down below. If you are a Windows user, you will search Google for Make MKV. It will bring you to this site and there you can download it for Windows. However, if you are a Linux user, depending on the distribution you are using, there will be different formats for this. As a Mint Linux user, you can open the software manager and then look for flat packs. And if you go there, you can search for MKV. And here it is. We've already installed it, but you would do the installation from this. Having installed Make MKV, you now launch it. Please, we recommend that you only use this legally. This channel does not support illegal things. As you can see, we have a genuine DVD. You need to put this into your DVD drive. However, today, most laptops don't have a DVD drive. So we have an external USB drive, and we will put the DVD in that drive. And close the drive. As you can see, the door shut. It's now scanning the DVD. Now, there are a few things you need to do. First of all, we need to register the software. If you look in our instructions, we've provided information how to do that. We need to search for Make MKV Beta Key in Google. So type it in like that, Make MKV Beta Key. And it will bring you up to this link. And then just copy that. Having done that, go to help, go to register, and you paste the key here. We've done that, so our copy is registered, and then you press OK. There is something we forgot to mention. If you go to the preferences, you can specify the folder where you create your your DVDs, in other words, the RIP folder, and you need to make sure that there's enough space there. And eventually you will get to this screen here. What we want to do is we want to find the chapter that has the maximum storage. So if we look here, this is 6 gigs. So we want that. And I'm going to remove this. If I go back here, we recommend that you only select the language you want. In our case, English and stereo English as well. So this, that's what we are going to select. And then you click this button here. And you can see in our RIPS folder, it's going to create a file called B1T00. This should take about three quarters of an hour. We'll let this run for a few minutes and then we will stop with this. And if we open the file explorer, we should now see a new file there. DVD rips. There it is. This is the new file. And if you look here, you can see we've already ripped this video. So what you're going to do is you're going to wait until it reaches the end. When it reaches the end, it will say success and you will have the file in your folder that you chose. Now, to save us time, we are going to stop this. It said failed, but in your case, it will say success. Now that we have our 
MKV files. Now that we have our MKV files, we want to convert these to the format we want to upload to our servers. In our case, we are using Caden Live for editing the videos for this YouTube channel. So we are going to use this as our editor. Grab the movie and drop it. If you look here, you can see there are multiple sounds being pulled because we chose to do that. Now that we have dropped the movie into the editor, all we need to do is to go to project and select render. We are going to render this as an mp4 file and then click render to file. We are now going to pause our video while we wait for Caden Live to render our movie. As you can see, it's going to take three quarters of an hour. Eventually, this thing finished after almost an hour. With Caden Live, I remove the job and close it. And if I open my file explorer and I look in my videos folder, here's my movie. I forgot to give it a name, but that's fine. This is Braveheart, so let's rename it as Braveheart. Should be able to play it. And now we are ready to upload files to our media servers. We are going to do that with the Jellyfin server. The process for Plex is identical. Since we are running a Docker container in the Stacks folder and the Docker container is Jellyfin, inside there a folder was created when the Docker installation ran and you'll find the same for the Plex server. A folder gets created. All we want to do is to drop files into that folder. We have already created folders for movies by category in there. So we've got classical movies, Greek movies, Italian movies, German movies other movies and Star Wars. Here is the movie we want to upload. If you are running Windows, you will connect to the same folder on the other server using WinSCP. However, since we are using Linux and our file explorer is called Kaja, we will use this to connect to the server remotely. You go into Files, you go into Connect to Server, you specify the IP address, we specify SSH, the folder is OPT, that's good enough, Stacks. Our user is Nico, and you type your password in there, and then you say Connect. I'm not going to do that since I've already created the Jellyfin connection. And when I click on there, it takes me straight to that folder. There's Stacks, there's Jellyfin, there's Media. And we want to put this in the classic movies. And all we do is drag and drop. This is happening over our Wi-Fi. Right, the folder is there. Now we can log into Jellyfin. And we're going to log in as admin. And we have a whole range of movies in different languages. German, Italian. I even have French and Spanish movies, but I haven't put them up yet. To create a folder, you go in here.
go to the dashboard, go to libraries, and you add a library. And we are going to add movies. The display name will be French movies. We need to add a folder. Now, normally, I would create this here and create the folder. Now that we have the folder, we can now publish to it. If we go to media, we should find it here. There it is. We say, OK. There are a few things you need to do, preferred language, French. And country of origin, let's make that France. Right. And this is about it, there's not much else we need to do. We've now created the French Movies folder. There's no movies uploaded there, so that will remain empty. However, we did upload our movie to the Classic Movies, so we will be able to see it there. You can create users with different security access, like I have a user that can only see certain movie folders, and they can only play the movies, nothing else. I then have another user, which is a super user, and that's my user, which can, can do everything, and then I have the admin user. And if we edit the user, you can see what we can do. We can allow the user to manage. We don't want to do that. But if we did, we can set that privilege there. We can allow live TV. There's a lot of things that you can allow. And you can even allow the user to delete from libraries. So if it's an admin user, that's fine. But you don't want any user to do that. So this is quite comprehensive. Once you've uploaded a movie, it will automatically pull down the images and whatever else gets displayed. Right, let's log out of this. So you click on there. Now I've downgraded myself to a user. Go to sign out. And now I'm going to log in as my user. And you can see here, the movie that we just uploaded is now available and it's in classic movies. I've got two German movies here. I'm not going to play the movie because I don't want to get into trouble with copyright. But I think this was enough to show that the movie can play. As you can see, this is a very simple process. We trust you found this useful. Please give us a like. Please subscribe to our channel as we haven't reached our target yet. And with that we say, Grazie amigo. Efcaristo sin aderfe. Vaya danke friend tot sins. Domo arigato tomadachi. Sayonara.